This is a bed of very intensely planted kohlrabi. And the slugs are now beginning to take its toll on their leaves. And I've successfully grown this Cossack kohlrabi with all types of slugs and every single leaf being even worse than that. And they still grow a bulb. And the bulb is, is mostly thick enough to thwart all their chewing efforts as well. They just kind of make little scars on the surface. So you can get a harvest even if you have a lot of slugs. But I'm going to be doing something here uh, as an experiment. I'll show you in a bit. All right, here's the first step in the process. I seriously thinned out their leaves, especially the ones that were angling away from the plant, from the bulb. And now I got a lot of sunlight in there. I'm going to dry that soil out a little bit. And I also harvested one maybe a little bit early. This one is probably the one I should have harvested. It. Harvested. There's another one that's getting pretty big. But I took this one because it looked like there was either a rodent or... It doesn't look like it just split. But once the skin is penetrated like that, these things can get rotten really fast. So this is going to be the first kohlrabi harvest of the season. And you can see these little slugs. That's what we're battling. And I actually picked off, I don't know, maybe 50 of them yesterday. And I actually I picked off the slugs yesterday off the off of an onion patch. So I think I picked off 30 or 40 this morning off of these kohlrabis. So now i got to do something. Now right, here's the next step. Now slugs can have some nasties on it, so I went and washed this really thoroughly. We had slugs all over the outer skin. There's even studies that show that that stuff can splash around, so you got to be careful how you wash it. I think the odds of me catching something, even if I ate it the way it was, are pretty low, but there's a possibility. Uh, I guess it's better to be on the safer side of this whole thing. Doesn't take much to wash it. I actually washed it first in rainwater, got all the slugs off. Then I went inside and I washed it from the tap water. I got this fishing flay knife. Gives you a little thinner cut. I can tell it's very tender away from the root. I think that looks pretty good, doesn't it, don't you? What do you think? Oh, first one of the year. Mmm. Oh, is that juicy? Just look at the water coming out of there. <laughs> yeah, he's going, Dad. Okay, on to the next step. Finished with the next step. And what I did was, is I cleaned out all the straw and plants. I didn't get them all on this one. Get all the plants out of there, all the straw away from there. See, like this is a little better. But we're gonna let it dry out just a little bit. It's already looking drying out in there pretty nice. Slugs don't like it dry. Now, I should mention that I have circle beds in here. You can see the right here is the inner circle that I mulch, and that is probably the home of those slugs. And I do have more experiments to do, and I'll show you that as we go along. Okay, this is the next step. I'm after these zebra mussel shells. There. Okay, you get the idea. I don't think it likes it. It can get across it, but it doesn't like it. Maybe it's puncturing little holes in it as it's crawling along and it's going to die later. Hmm. Let 
that sit there. I gotta go get my coffee. Watching the show. Definitely doesn't like it. Took the leaves off these stumps. They concentrate. Oh, there's another one right there. They concentrated the slugs on these little stumps, and I was able to get at them and kill them. Real easy. Whereas without all these leaves, it was hard to find them all. So slugs probably has some parasites and other things on them. That I gotta wash my hands again. All right, here it is. You seen it for yourself. All right, this is a couple of days after I've applied the zebra mussel sand mix underneath the kohlrabis, and it does not stop the slugs. See, the slugs are still able to crawl through there. There are less slugs than there was, but obviously. I don't know if the slugs, if there's some slugs that have died because they got punctured by the zebra mussels, or what the story is. See, I've been picking, last night I picked some off of the ends here, and the ends are still ex excluding or extruding or uh, pumping out juices, and these slugs are actually kind of gathering at the ends of these little stubs. Well, oh, the one benefit here that I can definitely say is because I thinned out the leaves now it's easy to see the slugs and then they just sit here on this end and I can pick them off really easy so I'm gonna do that right now here are the slugs I just harvested <laughs> so yeah have I gone out of my mind harvested what do you mean harvested yes well this is what I'm doing I'm washing them out in my Comfrey tea tank. Ooh, look at the mosquitoes want to lay eggs in there. That ain't bad either because that'll become fertilizer too. As long as I get them before they hatch. So uh, I wonder, now that I did that, I wonder if anything that I spray with this Comfrey tea because it's got a slug component to it, if whether or not the slugs even like to be touched by it. Because I've seen slugs kind of just melt away from that comfrey tea. Well, that's kind of interesting to think about, too. Okay, that's my slug story. I hope you had a nice time with it. That is a kohlrabi that I am going to harvest and eat for breakfast with egg. And this is what I use. <laughs> that makes things easier. Get in there, and I get the root, and cut it off. That's all you gotta do. There. Look at that. That's not a bad size. This is the second one I've harvested out of this little patch. I've planted quite a few of them here very densely. And the idea was that I was going to thin them out and eat them as I go. I'm going to turn this around. And you'll see there's onions here. And I'm going to have some onions with. Actually, the onions, those are potato onions. I don't want to harvest those yet. These are a mixture of shallots and candy onions and I gotta get some of these candy onions out of there so the shallots can grow that's a shallot you can see it has divided that's another shallot here's a candy and it's all by itself here's one I've been stepping on so I'll grab two of these right here so that's gonna be with eggs for breakfast this morning right there
you're going to say, oh, you're peeling that wrong and there's a lot of waste and, and all that stuff. And I say, no, there's no waste here. Everything is being recycled, don't worry. It's going back to soil life. There, look at that. And I can bring them in the house, wash them off, chop them up. And there you have it. Came out this morning and forage breakfast like I do every morning. As long as the ground's not frozen anyway.